Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. Thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. So the last few months I've been producing a project and we're kind of in the last final stages of it right now. This part can be a lot of fun because now I'm just adding some of the, what I like to call sprinkles. They're just the last minute little things that make it unique, give it color, um, maybe try to accomplish something that you haven't fully gotten there yet, just to reinforce certain ideas or whatever. So I found myself um, on one particular song, we got to the last chorus and it was sounding great, but I just wanted to take it up a notch. It just needed to be a little bigger, a little more epic, right? The overall instrumentation for this project is a little more on the acoustic side, acoustic drums, lots of acoustic guitar, some keys, um, a lot of organic elements. And there wasn't a, a rhythm electric guitar in it at all. So I said, well, yeah, cool. I'll put down some big, just whole note rhythm electric guitars just to really take it up a notch on the last chorus. Typically when I do this, I'll grab my Les Paul and my Tele and hard pan them left and right. Um, it just is a great combination that works really well. So that's what I did. Here's what it sounds like. So as you might have noticed in that clip, there is a lot of string noise. Um, it's just the noise of my hand moving from one chord to another. I'm playing power chords and what I like to call inverted power chords, which rather than 1-5-1 one, one, um, is 5-1-5. Five, five. Those usually make for um, just a cool, beefy sounding rhythm chord, but it also makes it easy to get between certain chords and power chords. It just gives it a, a cool texture that I like. So as much as I could, I'd already minimized the amount that I had to move my hand, but I was still getting a lot of noise. This is when I thought about one technique that I've heard about people using and I've heard on records and I kind of had sworn off. I pride myself or kind of my ideal situation is just very organic musicians playing down things minimal editing all that kind of stuff and so this just was the antithesis of how I like to do things but I knew that this was one way that I could get the sound that I wanted where it was super clean super tight and fit in the track really well here's what I did So as you could hear, I was just playing big whole notes to a click track. I went to the end of my session in Pro Tools where all the music was done, I let the click roll, and I played each individual chord by itself. After I had played each chord, I went in and edited each chord out individually. Here's what I mean by that. So here you can see in my session, I have each individual chord right here. I went ahead and labeled them so I know what chord they are. And I just blocked them in. Here's what that sounds like. So obviously that allows me to have a super tight, super clean rhythm track. Here's what it sounds like after I've copied it and put it into the track. So now this track is simplified. This isn't the original track. I just put this track together for this video, but it's very similar to what I did um, on the real song. I will say that the rhythm guitar is a lot louder than it would be on the actual track. This is just buried in there and it really just kind of gives it some meat. 
I kind of hate that I did this, um, but it works and it gives me the sound I'm after. It accomplishes what I'm trying to accomplish. I've definitely been in scenarios where I've had to play songs and I hear something and I'm like, man, how on earth did they get it that tight? There's no string noise, there's no fret noise. And it was soon after that that I realized that this is how people do that. It's super clean, super tight. Now, is this right for every song? Of course not. Um, I've, I think this is the first time I've ever done this trick, even after years of knowing about it. Um, so I'm not always going to do something like this. And again, I, I hate that I even did it on this song, but it works. In the end, you just have to figure out what works, what sounds the best, and what accomplishes what you're trying to do. That's kind of where I found myself with this, even though I hated to do it just because of my ideals and that I want things raw and organic, ultimately it was the right call. So I thought it'd be interesting for you guys to see this and see this little trick and just for me to come clean on this terrible thing that I've done by editing guitars so heavily. If you don't do any recording, hopefully it's interesting just because it's cool to see behind the curtain and see how people do things. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching this video. Be sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button. There are also some links down in the description of ways that you can support the channel and some of my favorite gear and whatnot. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.